We are about to uh, finish up. If you're, if you're following along at home, you know how um, I said in the syllabus um, that there's these different subsections within each topic. So um, V1.1 was like the introduction to three-dimensional vectors, which really didn't have very much in it. It's like, hey, here's a z-axis. What kinds of things can you do with it? Um, this week, we have been looking through um, V1.2, these further operations. Um, and you can see the things that we've covered so far. Um, we're kind of going to uh, finish up with V1.2 today, um, which will pave the way for vectors and vector equations of lines next week. Uh, now, the thing that we're going to do today is a little bit like, remember I told you about ratio division. Ratio division doesn't explicitly come up um, anywhere here. But it's a really great way to learn some of the skills that the syllabus wants of us, right? So I'm going to be doing much the same thing today with this idea of projection. It's not explicitly mentioned, but it's just such a, um, it's such an applicable idea. It's very clever. It builds on what we've done in extension one. I know you've, um, you've met projection before, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to expect Maybe this is an unfair expectation, um, but I'm kind of going to expect that you you know maybe the formula for projection. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to recite it. Um, there are multiple ones if you remember that, um, but perhaps don't have much of the, the understanding about where this goes, right, or, or where it comes from. So that's what we're going to focus on today and then see how it applies. Um, does that make sense? Got a rough idea of where we're going to head today? So what I'd love you to do is start by uh, drawing for me a pair of vectors. You can make them much like the vectors that I've drawn here, but part of the point of everything that we're doing with vectors is you can do it with any arbitrary vector or vectors. It's just that I've just placed them in two spots that are reasonably convenient to me. Now, for me, the uh, first explanation of projection, because you're like throwing all these formulas and... Um, and notation and symbols around, and you've got to know, like, what's the meaning of the thing you're doing, okay? The way this was explained to me the very first time is this sentence I've written here, right? When you are projecting, the first thing you do is you work out what we call the scalar projection. I should actually just jot that, jot that down for you. Um, the scalar projection, and like all scalars, um, it's a, it's a one-dimensional quantity, and that one-dimensional quantity is the length of the shadow that one vector casts upon another, as it were. So what I want you to imagine is, maybe I'll move this down just a teeny bit. If you can imagine, you know, the sun hanging out here and it's, it's shining down upon these two vectors. And you can sort of, um, in fact, let's, let's draw this on, right? You can imagine this top vector, A, casting a shadow, shadow onto this bottom vector, B like so, right? Now, what we're trying to work out is, hey, this shadow down, oh, that was a bit thicker than I intended, sorry. Uh, this shadow down here, there we go, it has a length. Um, that length is what we call the scalar projection. We're gonna work that out first, and then we are going to um, also, if we want to, include the, dis the diff, sorry, not the distance, uh, well, that's why I just worked out. We're gonna include the direction of this vector in what we call the vector projection, because scalar's just the length. Um, the vector projection is um, when you send it in a particular direction, right? So how does one go about doing this? Again, I wonder if there's any, um, any sort of, uh, ideas kicking around from when you encountered this in extension one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this from scratch uh, and it will feel a little bit theoretical. I'm very deliberately not really going to give you um, a worked example on this or maybe just very, a very brief one because um, it's just the idea that I want us to focus on and the, the geometry and the relationships between this, okay? Now don't forget, we're in three dimensions, but even though we're in three dimensions, you can always find a plane that uh, two vectors will sit in. Do you remember? I, Mrs. Oz, I don't think you were in the room, but I asked Ryan and Sean to yeah, arbitrarily... Yep, yeah, you saw the recording, yep. Um, so yeah, if... I tried to recreate it. <laughs> it. It's hard. You need, you need more hands, basically, which is why the two of you guys were, were perfect. So for any two arbitrary vectors facing in any direction, we can find the plane that they both sit upon, and that, as it were, is our piece of paper that we're looking at at the moment, okay? So even though I'm in three dimensions, I can still reason in two dimensions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the dot product to help me work out what the length of this shadow is. And here's how we're going to go about it, right? The dot product helps us work out, um, as you can see here, like there's an angle between A and B. Um, if A was parallel to B, don't draw this, but just suppose um, A was parallel to B like so, then 
that the length of that shadow, it's kind of like you don't need to do any working because the length of the shadow is just the length of A, right? Um, but of course, normally we're considering when A and B aren't parallel. So we need to work out this relationship between the angles of those vectors, right? So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to ask you to follow here with me, is put a few constructions on here to help us. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll say first, we're going to try and work out this, uh, this vector C. Uh, I'm going to call that the shadow, right? What I'm really going to start out working out is what is the length of this vector, right? That's the length of the shadow, right? Now, I can see that same length is actually, it appears in another place. If I go up here, it sort of slide the shadow up towards the top vector, right? This, this vector up here has the same uh, length, right? Because it's just opposite sides of a rectangle. The reason why this is helpful is because I can now match this up with the angle between uh, this sort of repositioned vector C is going to be the same as the angle between, if you can imagine picking up A and putting it tail to tail with B, you'd get the same theta, right? Like it's going to be, I guess I can, you don't have to draw this, but if I duplicated this over here, ta-da, you can actually see uh, it's that same theta, right? It's just in a different spot. Okay, so let me get rid of that because that's unnecessarily uh, clouding our diagram. There we go. So, how do we work this thing out? Well, I've got uh, the length. I can work out the length of this vector using just the, the magnitude of any vector. And you can see here what I've got actually is a right angled triangle in here. So I can use some pretty simple trigonometry and relate this to the dot product, right? So let's actually uh, jot some of this down. I, I'm just gonna use my space on the right hand side because I've um, not left myself enough space. So I'm just gonna say by trigonometric ratios, what is the particular ratio that connects um, the two sides that I've got here? And I fixed my laser pointer, so it should work. I've got A and I've got C. What's the ratio? The cosine. Yeah, fantastic. The cosine uh, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm just going to say cos of theta is equal to C, that magnitude, on A, like so. Now, uh, this is really helpful because what I can basically say is, hey, that, that cosine of theta, that appears in the dot product, right? So I can say, let's use the formula for the dot product that has cosine in it, so the angle between the two, and that'll give me an equation that doesn't have thetas in it. And that's really nice because we tend to get our vectors in component form, right? So if I've got all the components, then I don't need to work out theta separately. So here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to say, uh, a dot B. What's that going to be equal to? Well, I, I would normally say um, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, and then cos theta. But I don't need to say cos theta because I've got an expression for that. Magnitude of A, magnitude of B. I've got an expression for cos theta up the top here. Oops. Let's highlight properly, shall we? Can't reach it. There we go. I've got this um, expression up here, which is the same as cos theta. It's equivalent, but it just doesn't have any of um, the angle in it. So let me just grab that. Again, sorry, I'm just going to be a little bit cheap and do that, like so. And hopefully you can see, you're like, oh, I can, I can do some cancelling here, right? So what I'm going to do is um, on the denominator there, you can see that magnitude of A, it's going to cancel. Uh, with the magnitude of A that comes from the dot product formula. So now what I've got here is just, and I'll, I'll write this on the left hand side because if you remember, with the thing I'm trying to work out, the length of the shadow, it's this magnitude of C. So I'm going to get towards making that the subject. So I'm going to write that on the left hand side. That's just equal to A dot B because all the rest of the things have cancelled. Okay. All right, now let's keep going. I'm now going to say if, if what I want is just the magnitude of that uh, vector, the length of the shadow, I just have to divide through both sides by the magnitude of B, which I have over here, right? So let's go ahead and write that. So I've got A dot B on the numerator, and then I'm dividing by the magnitude of B. Okay, now this is, this is fine, this is all true, um, but I can write this in a slightly simpler form if you can help me remember that actually if you take some arbitrary vector and you divide that vector by its magnitude, what, what do you get when you do that process if you divide a, uh, sorry, a vector by its own length? 
Yeah, very good. This gives you the unit vector, or the, I should say the corresponding unit vector for that, because if it was a, a vector off at this particular angle and it was 15 units long, and then you divide by 15, well, now you've got the direction is still there. You haven't changed the direction at all, but you've divided by 15, so now it's one unit. So that's what makes it the unit vector, okay? So what I can do is I can say, all right, this, um, this scalar uh, projection, the length of the shadow, the magnitude of C, they're all the same thing. What that's equal to is A dot, and if you remember, we write the unit vector as the same as B, but with a hat over the top. Okay, so there's, there's the unit vector there. So this thing here is uh, what we were describing before. Where did I write it? Yes, I wrote it in purple. This thing is what we call the scalar projection. Remember, when you do this dot product, all you get is a number at the end, right? And this particular number, this scalar number, is the length of that shadow, okay? So what I can do is I can just sort of extend that just a little bit, and if I said, just going back to our original diagram, if I wanted to know not just the length of the shadow, but like where is that shadow facing, then all I have to do is multiply by the, the direction part, right? Now, if you have a look here, the direction is given by B, but I don't want to have like the length of it because that would change the length of the shadow that I've just calculated. So what do I multiply by to get the direction of B without any kind of change in its magnitude? It's, it's the unit vector again, right? Now this, this is important because um, what we're working out here now is the vector projection. So now I've got some direction involved. I remember when I first encountered this formula, and uh, what we've got here is no longer a magnitude. It is the actual vector C. Um, it's A dot B hat, but then that whole thing, which is a scalar, we just multiply that by B hat again. And I remember looking at this and I was like, why are there so many B hats in here? Um, it's gonna get worse. <laughs> um, but why, why is it there twice? And the answer is, it's there once because of this operation up here when we said, oh, I can just write this is the, the unit vector, so that simplifies. And then it's here a second time because we are um, restoring the direction of that because all we have is a scalar, right? Now, this thing here um, is the idea, right? This is what you will see as the notation um, projection of A onto B. It's very weird to say it like that, so I'm actually gonna write it explicitly. So it's in the recording, you can come back to it. We, um, we would write this as the projection of A onto B. Now, even though that's a bit of an awkward thing when you read that, um, it's a bit like, you know, with logs, right? If I say this, you can say um, log base two of five. <laughs> so the of five is the same thing, right? Like this is the, this is the subject, and then this is kind of like the, the, well, the base of the operation. It's the same deal here with the projection, right? You can literally see, if you go back to the original diagram, B is the, is the vector on the bottom, it's the base, right? And then A is the thing that's casting the shadow onto B, and that's one of the handy ways to remember it, okay?